Well, tomorrow night, the legendary play-by-play -play announcer Rick Jenneret will have his name raised into the rafters of the KeyBank Center. News 4 Sports' Paul Stockman caught up with a man who's called the Sabres games for more than 51 years. And Paul's in the studio with more tonight. Well, guys, how do you sum up a 51-year career with one team in just a few minutes? You can't. But we're going to try. It's no question that RJ means a lot to the Sabres, the fans, and it's been a special ride for him, too. We talked a great deal about his time as the man you heard every season since the 70s. Back to the point. Kept in by Buffalo with a long screen shot. Knocked out in front of the net. They score! Slapped in the net from inside the goal. And Jurgensen has his second of the night. April 29th. Rick Jenneret's final game as Sabres announcer. It's a title he prefers to be called, not Voice of the Sabres. I get introduced a lot as the Voice of the Sabres, and I make it very, very clear that I am not the Voice of the Sabres. Ted Darling was the Voice of the Sabres, and that should go to his grave with him. Um, I'm a Sabres announcer. For 51 years, this Sabres announcer called thousands of games and dozens of classic moments. Like Mayday, scary, scary good. good, and the always famous La 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 Fontaine. Here's La Fontaine going right in on goal to score! There may be a lot of all-time great moments, but there's only one, RJ. And I didn't pattern myself after anybody else, so I, I couldn't go to somebody and say, listen, what do you think I should do now? You just, there's only one RJ, right? Uh, not I, I guess so. It's, it's my inner self I have to consult, but uh, Do you think you got one more in you somewhere? Maybe, like if I, something crazy happens the next few years? They're still spontaneous, so I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. I hope I got five or six, but I don't think so. <laughs> Some famous calls and historic moments. While RJ wouldn't share his favorite goal call of all time, he would share a favorite moment of his. It happened in 2006 after the Sabres lost to the Carolina Hurricanes in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals. I lost in uh, seven games and had no defense left whatsoever. Everybody was out, they were all injured and everything. And so I went downstairs after the game and went to the room, which I never do. Never, I never go to the dressing room, stay out of there. But I went down and, uh, and I went around the room and shook everybody's hand because it had been a wild season. It was awesome, what a great ride. And I got around to Ryan Miller last and he looked at me and I looked at him and we both broke out crying. So that was the most emotional day I think I've ever had broadcasting hockey. RJ seen a lot in his days as play-by-play -play man for the Sabres, and he's mentioned retirement in years past. But there's one thing that always kept him coming back to the booth. Playoffs. Um, honestly, I, I might have been gone a couple of years ago, but I was kind of thinking this team was going to make the playoffs again. And uh, I was hanging my hat on that, and it has not happened, so now I have to give up. But now I'm on my way out this time, and they are getting very, very close. Wilson charges over there. And while he may not get to call a playoff game in his final season. It's no question the famous calls and famous moments from Rick Jenneret will live on in the memories of Sabres fans for years to come. And Friday, they'll put his name next to some of the greatest of all time in the rafters of the KeyBank Center. What do you think that night's going to be like when they when they put your name up in the rafters here uh, later this week? I don't know. I, I'm just kind of divorced from the situation until it comes, until it happens. Uh, I can say, okay, I'm going to feel this way, I'm going to feel like. No, I can't. I can't say what I'm going to feel like because I don't know what I'm going to feel like. And while he's meant a lot to the Sabres fans and the franchise, they've meant just as much to a young man from Ontario. What have the Buffalo Sabres meant to you? Everything. I mean, my entire adult life has been 
in airplanes and hotels on the road all the time, traveling through the, every season, doing exactly the same thing. The nice thing about it is that there's no two hockey games that are alike, so it's not boring, never boring. There's only 30 jobs in the world, you know, that's all there is, and uh, it's been pretty good. <laughs> Well, tomorrow night is RJ night at Key Bank Center. The ceremony is set for 640 just before the puck drop at 7 o'clock. If you are going to the game, the Sabres want to urge fans to be in their seats at 640. Now, if you missed any part of the story, if you want to just see another part again, just go to our website, WIVB.com, where you can see the story you just saw and also the one that we aired earlier tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, now, I've asked Rick what he meant to the Sabres. I've asked other fans around here what they – what about you guys – Either, he's kind of a colleague of yours, you know, being broadcasting people. And, you know, I mean, we've got well, all He's been with the Sabres as long as I can remember, I, you know? And I equate him with Van Miller. Yeah. Those, those voices, those iconic voices, you'll never forget. Uh, For me, the, it's May Day. And the players yeah. never wore helmets back in the days when he started. They were out yeah. there and stitching them up and then getting back on the ice after they got cut. It was amazing. So many changes. Listen, you and Chris Broadbent did a great job on this. And, of course, we'll be looking tomorrow night to see what happens in this great tribute. I did want to give one more shout-out to Rich Ersing as well. He also helped. He was another guy that helped us with this story. Great. So between the two of them, I mean, they made it all look good. And uh, it, was, it was just an honor to be part of this. Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Paul, and thank you, RJ.